Spirit. Faith that works for me. Now, I don't need my neighbor's faith. I need faith that works for me. I, I, I'm not here to be envious of my neighbor's faith. I'm not be here to be envious of my neighbor's blessing. I want only what God has for me. Just everybody shout, I want what God has for me. Come on. That's the first place of faith is when you can celebrate God for what he wants for your life. But we're so busy being bitter and hateful and envious and strife and sowing seeds of division that we can never embrace all that God has for us. It's because we're so busy lusting after what belongs to somebody else. So somebody shout, I'm, I'm thankful for what God has for me. And, and so without the, the, the temptation of going all the way back to the beginning of what we've been dealing with, I want to pick up a little bit uh, from where we left off on last week because I need you to know if faith is going to work for you, then you must understand that faith on your level requires this, and you might want to write it down. You've got to stop doing what you're not assigned to. You got to stop doing what you're not assigned to. Some stuff you trying is not for you. Right. Let me just free you today. Yeah. Let, me, let me just free you today. Yeah. Let me help somebody today. Some stuff you trying is not for you. It's not for you. That's why you keep experiencing so much failure in that because it could be that that is not for you. Okay, I know, I know everybody else has succeeded in it. I know everybody's prospered and I know everybody does it so well, but that's not your lane. Uh -huh. If we're going to embrace the faith that works for us, we got to learn to appreciate our lane. Somebody shout, I got to appreciate my lane. Come on, say it, God, I got to appreciate my lane. I'm not going to hate over my neighbor's lane. I'm going to celebrate my neighbor's lane while I watch them work and believe the same favor that's on their life is on my life because the same God that came through for them is going to come through for me. Can I get a witness this morning? So I want to revisit a passage um, that, that was recorded, uh, written about David from the, the writing of Samuel. Um, we, 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 we stopped there on last week, and I want to I I go to version two of this discussion. Um, and so let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 33, uh, verse, uh, 1 Samuel 17, verses 33 through 40. Now, I wore, I'm using my lavalier today because I don't want to rush this discussion. Y'all pushed me when I got the handheld so I can kind of pace myself a little bit because I'm, I'm trying to teach you on how to get blessed. And I don't want to rush this this morning. Are y'all cool with that? I don't want to rush it. I don't need y'all pushing me. Amen. Amen. Amen, musicians. Let me just teach this because in all thy getting, get an understanding. I'm just trying to help y'all get an understanding. That, that's all I'm trying to do. So, so let's go to verse 33 of 1 Samuel uh, 17. It says, and Saul said to David, uh, you are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for you are but a youth, and he has been a man of war from his youth. Uh -huh. Verse 34, you know the story, but David said to Saul, your servant uh -huh. used to keep the sheep of his brother. David tells Saul about his resume. Yeah. He says, listen, I, I know you, you are basing it on my exterior and maybe you think I don't have any experience about uh, for what I'm getting ready to embark upon, but I'm not new to this. Right. I'm true to this. Yeah. See, see, when you know what God's called you to do, yeah. you sometimes uh, you can confidently explain your next move. Right. Am I helping somebody today? Yeah. So when I'm moving, good to see you, Miss Lord. When I move into things of God, there's some things I'm experienced for. When I look at all the hell I've gone through, yes, I realize that the hell was not in vain. That God was using the hell to prepare me for what's next in my life. So when you look at your life, I don't know who I'm talking to in this room or maybe in the cyber sanctuary, but can we just take a moment and just press rewind a little bit? Just look at that divorce you came through. Look at that bankruptcy that you came through. 
Look at that layoff that you came through. Look at that you being a single parent raising one child on one single income with minimal support with the father not picking up the child and you still made it work. I want you to know that that was training ground for what's next on your life. I'm here to tell somebody you are about to face a Goliath, but guess what? You have been equipped to handle it. You have been equipped. Somebody shout, I'm equipped to handle it. All right, so, so, so verse 35, he says, I went after him and struck him and delivered him out of his mouth. And if he arose against me, I called him by his beard and struck him and killed him. I'm, I'm trying to move quickly because I, I can stay there for a little while and I don't want to do that. I got so much I got to give you. And then verse 36, your servant has struck down both lions and bears and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of them. Um, when you look at your next measure of faith, yeah. you've also got to look at prior victories that you have received and understand that the same God that came through then is the same God that's going to come through now. Hallelujah. I feel that one. Listen, listen, anybody got any prior victory statements? Any prior victory? Any, come on, let me just see. I know these lights are on. I can't see that much. But if you've got history with God, then you've got to know the same God that was with you then is the same God, hallelujah, that's going to be with you now. So whatever you wrote on your piece of paper on last week, God told me to tell you I'm with that. I'm with that. I, I was with you then, and I'm with you now. All, all you got to do, just equip yourself, prepare your life, watch this to handle what's next. Some of you have things, dreams, goals, visions, and ideas and suggestions that come from heaven, but you're not set up for it yet. All right? So, so, so uh, verse 37, and so David said, the Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear uh, will deliver me from the hand of the Philistine. And, and Saul said to David, uh, well, man, since you, you, you believe God's going to be with you, then I ain't got nothing else to say. Go, and the Lord will be with you. Go, and the Lord will be with you. Just every hand I feel by the unction of the Spirit of God to say this. Just lift your hands, every, even in the cyber sanctuary. God told me to tell you, go, and I'll be with you. Go, and I'll be with you. Derek and Kim, go, and I'll be with you. Come on. I, I can go knowing that he's with me. As long as he's with me, I'm cool. Go, and God is with you. Hallelujah. That, that, that's all I needed to hear, Ellie, is that I, I just needed to know that I can go and then know that God is with me. Can we just thank God for him being with us? Just say, Lord, thank you for being with me. Now, here's what you got to do, though. You got to be real careful because sometimes people's support comes in the wrong form or fashion. And when you're trying to move in what God's called you to do, you got to know what God has said and what's unique for you. So let's watch this. And, and I know Saul meant no, no, no ill intention. Saul just wanted to help him. Anybody that loved you is going to do everything they can to help you and love you and support you. But sometimes even your supporters miss it. And so in verse 38, it says, then Saul clothed him with his armor. He gave him, he says, listen, man, well, since you're getting ready to go out to war, let me go ahead and give you what has worked for me. Okay. Now, I do believe there is wisdom in the multitude of counsel. So this is in no way a suggestion that you dismiss wisdom. Okay. Uh, I heard it put another way that I'll use for the rest of my life when God is not speaking. Use wisdom. When, when you don't know what God wants you to do next, then use wisdom. Because there are times where he's not saying a whole lot. And so he's, 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 he's hoping that you use prior training from previous experiences to then help you shape the next move in your life. But some of us move off of zeal and not wisdom and we end up embarrassed. All right, so then Saul clothed them with his armor. He put a helmet of bronze on his head and clothed them 
um, with the coat of mail, verse 39, and David strapped his sword around his armor. Um, and look at this part here at verse, verse 39. David accepted the help. Okay, so this is a sign of honor that he's honoring leadership. Who this is good today? He's honoring leadership by accepting the advice, but the advice he received or the help he received didn't work. Okay, so, so David was wise enough. Oh, Lord, have mercy. This is good. He was wise enough to hear God through the man of God. This is good today. He was wise enough, Dr. Dana, to hear God through the man of God. So he accepted the instructions of the man of God. And when that did not work, he then had to retreat to the work the way that it worked for him. Oh, hallelujah. So, so, and I believe this is why it worked was because he honored. He honored his man of God. You know, we, we want to be, you know, re renegades. We, we you know, we want to be bastards. We want to be, you know, we just want to get out in the middle of the street and, 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 and no accountability, you know. Uh, and I want to help somebody. If, if, if you want to know what God is saying, then call your pastor. Oh, Lord, help us today. I'll put it another way. I'll put it another way. Let me, let me add Bible to that. Uh, there's, a, there's a scripture where a young man was hearing from God, and, and he kept getting woke out of his dream, and, and, and he kept checking. He says, uh, did you say something? He says, no, man, I didn't call you. I mean, he, he just six times, he called, uh, Pastor, did you call me? No, man, I ain't called you, man. What is going on? It was because, watch this, God sounded like his father. See, see. Y'all don't want to talk back to me. They, they, let me go up here, man. They don't want to. Everybody want to do their own thing. They want to be great on their own level. And we want to dismiss counsel, which is why we get out in faith and get embarrassed. Anytime I'm making a major move, thank you, daughter. I'll do my best. When anytime I'm making a major move, I will seek the counsel of my bishop. Hey, bishop, I'm thinking about doing X. What you think? See See, well, my girlfriend had said, and we kind of had out, we went out, had drinks together, and we were all, you know, we were just, we were just a great support, and all our girlfriends, and we was all out, whoo, child, had a great old time, and we just, they were supporting me. That, that ain't what I asked you. What did your pastor say? What did I, what did my, well, well I, I ain't got a pastor. Well, let me help you. Let me, let me move on. Oh, let's, 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 let me, let me not do that. Let me not do that. You're trying to get me in trouble. Let's, let's, let's move on. I'm, I'm not, that ain't this, not today, not today. Maybe another sermon. Uh, it says, then he tried in vain to go for he had not tested them. Then, then David admitted to Saul, listen, man, I appreciate your pastor for trying to help, but man, what you told me to do, it ain't working for me. He says, so, so, so David took it off, verse 40. Then he took his staff in his hand and chose five smooth stones from the brook, and he put them in his shepherd's pouch, and um, his sling was in his hand, and he approached the Philistines. Now, now, when we're talking about matters of faith, if faith is going to work for you, you want to write this down. Faith for you means knowing what works for you. Faith for you means knowing what works for you. Can we say that out loud together? It's on the screen, if y'all don't mind. Just say it together. Faith, Faith for, me for me means knowing what works for me. Say it again. Faith for me means knowing what works for me. I got a question. Do you know what works for you? Do you know? Do you know? Do you know? What works for you? See, I've, I've, I've tried certain areas of faith, which is why I can step into the deep waters of faith because I have the, the, the frame, the build to be able to move into deep waters. Some of y'all just need to do faith in shallow waters. Hallelujah. Uh, when God had told us to embark upon this project of um, uh, renovating this space, or I'm calling it flip this building. <laughs> you know, they flip houses, so I'm going to flip this church. So 
when God told us to turn this into a 200 seat sanctuary and I didn't see how it was going to happen. And then then I invited folk who's smaller than me. I met with an architect. I met with a couple of contractors. I met with electricians. I met with HVAC folks. I enlisted the wisdom of other people to help support, watch this, or affirm what I was believing God for. And all I needed the architect to say was, you can do it. Architect was so crazy. He walked in. He looked at the spaces. Well, tell you what, uh, let's just get some chairs. He says, how many seats you need? I said, well, I need about 200 seats in. He says, well, let's line them up. He took chairs from one end and lined them all the way. And we went through literally and counted every chair. You need that kind of person in your life. Let it tell you, all right, so this is what we believe in God do. Let's well, let's try it out. What does the future? Let's 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 find a way to create a blueprint for it. So he lined the chairs up. I mean, all of us says, we well, you know it's the door. He says, That's all right, open the door. So he opened the door, and I'm 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 serious. And he lined the chairs up and he literally went chair by chair and counted seats. Said, Yeah, Pastor, uh, we, we can do it. Not I can do it, not you. Uh, Pastor, we, we, we can do it. So now that told me he had buy-in into my vision. Who, Lord have mercy. If what you believe in God for don't require the help of nobody else, it's too small, go back again. Your assignment needs somebody else's help. And if it is only designed to bless your life, it's not God. Because anything God calls you to is designed to be a blessing to somebody else. Which is why we stay where we are. It's because we think too small when it comes to matters of faith. We want enough faith sufficient to just bless our own lives. I want to be so blessed that I'm blessing somebody else. Hallelujah. That, that I'm the number they call when they need something simply because I understand that my faith has a grace attached to it. And that if I'm going to be doing anything great for the kingdom of God, I need a faith that's attached to generosity. All right, all right. So just say faith for me means knowing what works for me. Here's another one. You've got to divorce yourself from what others are saying if you want to see God move in your life. You've got to divorce yourself from what others are saying if you want to see God move in your life. David learned how to use the faith he had always had in new territory. He, he, he knew that his faith, it was time for his faith to get an upgrade. Some of, you, some of us are in stale faith. I was uh, blessed to sit with uh, Dr. Ivy Hilliard. Thank you so much. And I was blessed to sit with Dr. Ivy Hilliard this weekend. And uh, I was invited to an Apostles Roundtable. I mean, it was a very intimate setting. Got a chance to up front and close with Dr. Hilliard now. I'm a $1,000 seed sower. Been doing it for years. $1,000, I'll sow it. But I got in that environment, and God says it's time to go to another level. Time to go. You, you've mastered that level. Y'all want to talk to me. So, so I'm there, and, and, and I had already, I had prepared to give a 1000 Right, I had prepared in my heart because that's my lane. Right, I'm I'm, I'm your man, a thousand. I'm your man. <laughs> but God said, "Ah, uh, for what you need from me, I need you to sow into what He has." Lord, have mercy. So it was without question that I passed text Pastor D. I said, "Hey, I'm sowing into this." So you need people around your life that say, "Cool." Not, you know, uh, the rent's due coming up. You, 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 you know, uh, you know, car payment due. So, so, well, I've learned to manage my life to a degree where I never have to take money for bills to sow seed. So, so that now it's a problem of management. We can't be generous because we've not managed well. 
I don't need to be fighting God over a car payment when that's really his seed. Lord have mercy today. Some of y'all living in your seed, driving your seed. You got your, you wearing your seed in your hair right now. I see it. I'm not going to call you out. Which is why your faith can't shift. Are you catching what I'm saying? So I was in that atmosphere. I got some. So I started. I walked away, starting believing God for jets. I'm believing God for a jet. What you say? I'm getting a jet. I'm getting one. I don't know how much they cost, but I'm getting one. You know what I'm saying? Now I can help partner with my friends and brothers in the ministry. Say, hey man, for your assignment, man, we, we got just take care of the pilot. We'll gas and take care of the gas you cover. Don't have to deal with domestic flights anymore. See. I'm thinking about who needs this blessing. What, what can God do through you to help create convenience for somebody else? Which is why you got to, when, you, when you're shifting in the matters of faith, you got to make sure, Lord, let me, let me, let me, let me just, this is good, this is good, this is good. All right, all right. So, so David learned how to use the faith he's always had in new territory. And David's faith was developed in smaller ponds, so you got to you, you practice your faith. Somebody say, I got to practice with faith. Come on, I got to practice with faith. Come on, say it again, I got to practice with faith. In order to give faith to, faith to work for you, you must also understand this truth. Lift your hands up, every hand, lift it up. Now face it towards you. Just look at your hand. Everybody look at your hand, not me. You can win with your hand. You can. Look at it again. Look at those hands. You, you can win with your hand. Dr. I.V. said something, man, I'll never forget for the rest of my life. He said, God deals every man a winning hand. <laughs> Say, God deals every man a winning hand. Say that God deals every man a winning hand. I'm going to use that for the rest of my life. You can win with your hand because you know God deals every man a winning hand. Hallelujah. You just have to find a way to maximize your current hand through faith. That's how you max, say, I'm going to maximize my hand through faith. Say it again, through faith. Now, here's the thing. I'm not here to say that there are things you can't do in the earth realm to assist or complement your faith. I believe in education. I believe that. You should further your education if that's what you're called to do. You're talking about you're going to be in boardrooms and things of that nature. you got to have a, maybe a couple of degrees behind your name. Because it's not, you're not dismissing. Because here's the thing. The certificate is not for you. It's for them. <laughs> I, I, I went to seminary not because I needed seminary. I went to seminary because of you all. Do you, 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 you believe that? Ask my wife. She's, you know, they ask, why did you go to seminary? It is because God is sending me smart people. And I can't come sit up talking about, oh, you know, oh, you know, I, I don't need school. No, I've got doctors, lawyers, educated, well-informed individuals. And the best way for me to reach you is to come to where you are. So you don't dismiss what I'm saying. So I'm here to help somebody understand there's nothing wrong with furthering your education or adding certifications for you to get whatever it is that you're trying to do. But what I'm saying is that doesn't make you. I understand my assignment demands that I have the certificate. Me and school don't, we like oil and water. We, we don't do well together. But I sat in the seminaries. I went through, I think my hardest class was a, was a, a um, Old Testament, New Testament survey. Tough, listen, tough. But I sat through it because I knew it was necessary for what was on my life. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you today? Say, I can win with my hand. All right, all right. Now, I told y'all a couple of weeks ago that saving faith requires blood. Is there anybody in here with faith with blood on it? Let me just see by a show of hands. 
So I told you this, and I'm going to give you a few things, practical things you can run with. While saving faith requires blood, the gift of faith requires development. Every God deals every man saving faith. We all get saving faith. But, but faith as a gift is just that. It's a gift. It has to be developed. So just say, I've got to develop my gift. Okay. Uh, saving faith, the qualifier for saving faith is to have faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ. Instantaneously, you have received uh, the gift of the, the salvation faith, which is giving you access into the kingdom of God. But if you want to take it any further, the gift of faith requires development. Everybody shout, the gift of faith, the gift of faith. requires development. So here's a few things you must understand about the gift of faith. This is good teaching today. Y'all good? Y'all good? All right. Here's a couple things y'all need to understand about the gift of faith. A few things you need to do to enhance your walk with faith. First thing you got to understand when it comes to the gift of faith, the gift of faith requires education. You got to educate yourself on faith. Okay. Gift of faith requires education. Everybody shout education. Come on, say it again. Education. Let's prove it in the word of God. First Thessalonians. Go there with me. First Thessalonians uh, chapter 2. First Thessalonians chapter 2. Let me give you all this, this, this great download on this morning. First Thessalonians chapter 2. And as ESV, uh, and uh, this is Paul writing to the church of Thessalonica. He says, we, all, uh, we ought always give thanks to God for you, brothers, as it is right, because, look at it, what does it say? Your faith is growing. Somebody say, I, I've got to educate myself on matters of faith. So Paul says, we ought always to give thanks to God for you, brothers, as it is right, because your faith is growing. Everybody shout, my faith is growing. This is so good. There's somewhere else I want to take you. Uh, uh, my faith is growing. Uh, let's, let's keep reading. He says, um, your faith is growing abundantly. I love that. It's growing abundantly, and the love of every one of you for another is increasing. When we talk about educating ourselves on matters of faith, faith grows as the word of God is applied properly. Here's a problem with some of us with faith is we are praying for stuff God has not allotted for us. Okay, so let me put it another way. Um, if you, when you pray, um, I give you the desires of your heart when you pray. Why is the, 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 the contingency when it, because when you pray, I'm only going to put things in your heart that's for you. That's the secret. It's when I pray, prayer gets me out of being envious and jealous and wanting what doesn't belong to me. When I pray properly, God gives me things that are designated and assigned to me which automatically invokes my right to believe God for it. Ask and it will be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door will be opened unto you. Listen, you can say to this mountain, be thou removed to cast it and it will happen. It's because you're asking based on what is allotted for you. Are you asking what's been permitted for you or your neighbor? We ought to always give thanks to you, God, brothers, as it is right, because your faith is growing. Faith grows as the word of God is properly applied. Watch this. With the cross being the object of our faith. That's what that whole text has to deal with. It's the cross being the object of our faith. Another word, and I heard it this way. Glory to God. I heard it another way. I heard it another way while I was 30,000 feet up in the air. I heard it another way. He says faith has to be programmed. It's got to be programmed. I was up reading uh, uh, Bishop Jake's book, Don't Drop the Mic. You got to pick it up. Picked it up on yesterday, reading it up there. And, and he was talking about not dropping the mic. And I don't know how I got the thought connected it to faith. And, and, and now I'm talking about it today. Faith has to be programmed. Everybody shout, faith has to be programmed. 
So another word for education that I want to use is programming. Programming. Everybody shout programming. programming. When I got home and landed, I finally looked up the word program. Program means to provide a computer or a machine with coded instructions for the automatic performance of a task. So, so when it comes to matters of faith, maybe we wrestle with it. It's because we've not programmed ourselves with sufficient amount of information to cause us to move. We have enough information to pray for it, but not enough revelation to move after it. When I program, I tap into revelation, I move into it without question, logic, or reason. So some moves I make, it's in matters of faith and revelation. When I program myself with enough word, when I program myself with enough of his word, then I arrange my private life to accommodate what I'm believing him for publicly. Then automatically I qualify what I'm asking for. As long as the private and the public don't come together, you will be harassed by your own dream. You'll dream about being that. You'll dream about becoming that. You'll dream about walking into that. It's because private and public has not come into alignment or agreement with one another. So my faith requires programming. Somebody shout, I got to program this. Let's, let's, let's look at this. Numbers chapter 13. This text deals with the 12 spies. The 12 spies, uh, uh, Moses uh, sends out 12 spies. Now, let me, let me give context here. Numbers chapter 13, verse 1. Um, and I'm going to give you four things you need to know about faith and all that in just a few seconds. But I'm giving you this text first because I want to show you how faith is programmed. Okay. And so, so the Lord uh, backs the request because initially the instructions were just go. But they said, no, I don't want to go. I, I want a preview first. I don't want to go. I, ain't, I, 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 I need a preview first. So what happens is God says, cool, if that's what y'all need. And here's the thing. Some things God will speak to you. You don't need the details. Because the details will freak you out. They, I, they will mess you up. I know what I'm talking The details will jack your life up to the point where now you restrict it in movement because your faith has now been attached to fear. And anytime fear is attached to faith, it's because you're looking at it from your own current predicament or your own current condition. And when God wants to move in matters of faith, he's not basing it on what is. Neither what was, but what's to come, which is why some things you just got to move on the instruction only. But these folk here said, we don't want that. This is based in Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 25. If you want to read it later this week, the initial instruction was just go in it, man. Go get the land. They said, nah, I want to, I want I want to stick to Tip of my foot, foot in. You'll catch it later. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 when we, when we, when we tell God we need extras for faith to work, we're suggesting to God that He is not intellectual enough to be aware of our anthropological makeup. And so what, what I've learned to do is some things I just don't question when I don't have answers. Oh, Jesus. Faith has to be programmed. has to be programmed. So let's look at this. Numbers 13 and 1. The Lord said to Moses, send men to explore Canaan, which I'm given to the Israelites. Send one leader from each of the ancestors' tribe. So at the Lord's command, Moses sent these men from the desert of Paran, and all of them were leaders of uh, Israelites, okay? So, 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 so faith 
has to be programmed towards an objective, 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 programmed. You're going to get it in just a minute. Programmed towards an objective. Faith is asking you, what is the objective? What's the objective, Ken? What, what is the objective? Okay, you want to go back to school. What's the objective? Why? Well, because I can prove all of my girlfriends that I got my undergrad and my master's and I'm going to be getting my PhD so I can post on Facebook that I'm Dr. So-and-so. Okay, you, you don't need it. Why do you need that? And many times the question is designed to show us the, the measure of our heart for why we're asking for certain things. So anytime I ask God for anything, I attach a why or reason to it because I'm, I'm, I'm telling myself this is not for you. It's given to you on loan. You just use it when it's not in use. That's how it is with our finances. I don't own what's in my account. God, I was telling my wife, we, we gave the leaders in the, it was, what is it, Monday? Uh, leadership development. We talked about, what is it? A leader is grateful. Come on, pull it, pull it out real quickly, son. Pull it out. Generous, growing. You can see they ain't paying attention in the leadership class. What, what is it? Where's your notes? At home. At home. Why you didn't put it on your phone? Okay. Where's my phone? I'm going somewhere with it. Hold on. Hold on. I don't know now. No. No, that ain't what I said. Now they're making up stuff. A leader is grounded. Yeah. A leader is grounded. A leader is growing, a leader is grateful, and a leader is generous. So, so, so I was, Pastor D asked me, she says, uh, you know, that was really good, sweetheart. She says, but there's one of them I, I, I got to ask about. She said, one on generous. I don't know that I'm, I'm real generous. I said, no, sweetheart, you are. You're very generous. She says, no, babe, you, you just the other day, you went through your closet and you, you just took clothes down and just went and gave them away. I said, well, I it's because I was feeling in excess. Why should I ask for more when I can't get rid of what I got? She says, well, how do you do? I says, here's the thing. You don't need anything God can't talk to you about. You don't, don't drive nothing. Don't live in nothing. Don't wear nothing that God can't tell you to give away. If he can't tell you to give it away, it's an idol. Or I doll. It's your little doll just for you. It's something you pet that builds your ego so you can floss in the summer months and we go on family vacation or, you know, you know how you do. You get around certain family members. Y'all like, come on, come on, man. Come on, man. Car ain't been washed all year long. <laughs> Doc, you go to the wash, the, the, the car wash. You ask them jokes to wax it, clean the interior, detail it, make the tires shine. It's because you got an image that you got to keep up. Don't possess anything that you can't give away. Don't. I know it's heavy. Some of y'all looking like, man, that just disqualified me. When it comes to matters of faith, matters of faith requires you to be at a place of understanding that whatever it is that you're believing God for or doing in your life, that is, it really is not for you. It's for the benefit of the development of someone else. Well, this, this even gets down to your time. You know, your time is not your time. 
Someone called me at 10 o'clock last night. I kid you not. Usually, I'm, 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 alarm is on. No, all of old folks' alarm is on at 10. Alarm is on. I've had a shower. I'm going to bed. But this gentleman reached out to me, Kim, at 10 and was crying out for therapy. And I sat there in the middle of sermon preparation trying to work the last few thoughts of the sermon. And I'm like, man, it's Saturday night. I got to go. And, and the Lord said, no, your time is my time. See, he's used to people only wanting him for what he can do. Show him that it's not for what he can do, that you more, you're more concerned about soul. So I spent an hour with this young man, although I was tired. My time is not my time. And, and when it comes to matters of faith, you're going to have to learn to bless people with time. Not with people who are going to waste it. This is not saying give your time to anybody. Absolutely. But someone who is going to value your time because you have something that can build their lives. Because watch this. Somebody gave you their time. So now it's your turn to return the favor and build somebody else's life and encourage them by the gener generosity of time. Am I helping you today? I don't know why I went there. Lord, I, I got to hurry up here. Faith has to be programmed towards an object in order for it to increase measure that you require. Four components of faith that you got to be educated on, and I'm going to quit here. Four components of education that you got to be educated on. Everybody shout, I got to educate myself on matters of faith. Say it again. I got to educate myself on matters of faith. There are four components or mechanics of faith. Uh, that you must familiarize yourself with. The first one is submission faith. Submission faith. Everybody shout submission faith. Submission faith is a faith that when God speaks, you submit to it. This is a faith that the 12 spies missed out on. It's because they missed out on the, ab the ability to submit at the spoken word. Sometimes God will, own, will, will, will leave out the details and give you the concise instruction that's sufficient. Submission faith. Submission faith, God will speak to you. Kelsey, say, hey, I want you to move to Dallas, Texas. Well, I don't know nobody in Dallas. That, that, that don't matter. Submission faith, get to Dallas. Because there's something in Dallas that's got your name on it. That you can't get in Houston, Texas. That you can't get in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. That you can't get in California, but it's in Texas. You've got to understand that when it comes to the mechanics of faith, uh, one dimension of it is you've got to submit. Somebody shout, i got to submit. I gave someone an instruction on last week. And one true way of, of, of submission faith is that they obeyed the instructions of the faith, of what I told them to do. I told them to go buy 50 boxes. They go buy 50 boxes and start packing. Don't matter what your credit score is. Don't matter how much reserve you got. Holy Spirit said get 50 boxes. Right? Submission faith. Everybody shout submission faith. Submission faith. Let's go to Luke 5 and 5 to prove it in Scripture. It says uh, uh, Simon, uh, when Jesus comes up to Simon, Simon is frustrated in his assignment. And God takes Simon to the next dimension and education on matters of faith by saying, Peter says, Master, we have told man all night. We have degrees in fishing. Doc, you new to this. I'm true to this. I'm not a line fisherman. I'm a net fisherman. I know where they bite net. Jesus, I got all that. Somebody who don't know anything about your industry will come in and speak to you matters of faith and say, God said, do X. And you're looking at them like, man, come on now. I, I mean, it's because God will speak something that is foreign to someone else to show you that it's from God. 
So Simon said, the master, we've toiled all night and it took nothing but, look at it, submission, faith, but at your word, I will let down my net. Submission takes, takes the instruct, submission, faith takes the instruction given, move based on what's spoken. Submission, faith dismisses reasoning, logic, and reality and moves based on the spoken moment. Moves on the spoken moment. Um, Lift your hand, every person in this room. We're going we're gonna to put this into practice. We're going to put it into practice. We're going to put it into practice right now. Lift your hands. Everybody watching me right now. God told me to do this, so I'm not doing this just to be funny, but I'm doing it because I heard Holy Spirit said do it. So I want you to get one thing on your mind that was on your piece of paper, Lexi, that you believe in God to do. Just one thing, one thing, one thing, one thing. Get it on your mind. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. That one thing, is it on your mind? Nod your head. God told me to tell you, go after it. Well, Pastor, you don't know what it is. I, 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 I don't care. Well, you know, Pastor, my credit situation, I, I, I don't care. Well, you know, Pastor, the situation with the mortgage crisis and there ain't no house. I, I, I don't care. Whatever is for you, it's for you. Nobody can live in, drive in, wear, or be with what's yours. <laughs> Nobody can live in, drive, wear, or be with what's yours. Are you catching what I'm saying? Submission faith requires that you go at the spoken word that has been released. Is this good teaching? It is. So it's a faith that, that dismisses region, reasoning. It dismisses logic. It dismisses all education and comprehension of how you move into something. Submission faith at the seat of the word spoken moves. Everybody shout submission faith. There are moments... When God will speak through the voice of your man of God. And you have to learn when those moments happen and go. This young man I'm working with, uh, Kevin, he's not here to tell his testimony. He, he decided to take a vacation this weekend, he and his lovely wife. And so uh, 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 he, he works with me in, in physical training. You know, he's kind of building up a little bit. Muscles are download right now, and so so um, so he works with me a couple of, couple of times a week, Don, and I, I go see him every we meet at the gym, so and so forth. He don't know, but I'm also working him out too. He he has no idea. Now I let the cat out the bag, but I'm actually I got him in a different kind of fitness training. He's working on my temple. God's using me to help him work on his spirit. You, you feel me saying? So he was with me a few weeks ago, and, and I, said, I said, son, I said, uh, tell me about your product. He, he got these little new energy drinks. They're amazing, as a matter of fact. And I said, yeah, yeah we've all had them. If you hadn't had them, go ahead and order them. Uh, I said, tell me what your plan is. He says, oh, well, you know, I'm going to just order that. that, that. And he said, I said, well, what we got to do is got to figure out a subscription situation. So, you know, what do you mean? I says, no, no. I says, you got to think smart. I says, right now, you got to send all 50 packages a week. What if we found a way somebody did a subscription, just paid you monthly, they get X amount, packages every month, boom, you, 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 you make more money. He was like, I didn't think about that. I said, great. I said, tell me, what, 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 where, is this, where is this center going to be? Well, you know, I'm believing God. I walked the building. I said, great, great. Have you filled out the paperwork? No, we'll see what it happened. I didn't ask you that. Have you filled out the paperwork? Well, you know, I'm going to get to it. I'm working. I said, here's what I need you to do. I need you to call so-and-so, and then I'm giving you till Thursday. Fill out the paperwork. Well, past so-and-so, I have this. I didn't ask you that. If you're going to be around me, what's on me eventually gets on you. Same favor and oil and anointing. If you helping me get fit and, and so I can live long, be around so I can chase past you, be around the house, surely God wants to bless you. Right? Submission faith. So I tell him, I said, listen, I'm giving you until X date to get 
this particular thing done. Get to the date we're on the, uh, the, the, I don't know what the thing is, the treadmill, some I don't know, sweat, just, I mean, just fresh. Say, hey, did you get that paperwork turned in? Yeah, yeah, I got it turned in, man, got it turned in. Great. Now we've got something we can pray about. Y'all missed that. Y'all missed that. You all, <laughs> y'all are stuck with the idea, but no action. So God can't move on the landlord if you ain't even submitted your name. See, 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 y'all, y'all missing. So I told him, I said, just submit your name. We're going to believe God to do the rest. Well, you know, the situation is they need X and da 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 I, I don't, I don't really care about all of that. Heard this week, man, when he was uh, coming to church on Wednesday night, you know what he did? Flash the keys to me. Flash, I kid you not. You call, I'm telling you, kid you not. He handed, and I went and walked about. I said, well, how much? He said, man, he ain't told me nothing. He just gave me the keys, said, move in. Matter of fact, they asked for plans, told me, what, what do you want the facility to look like? As a matter of fact, they handling all the construction, too. You can't tell me we serve a God that will not do exceeding abundantly above all that we may ask, think, or may. Sometimes you got to submit to what the word of God has been spoken over your life. Stop asking so many questions and just go. Submission faith. Second mechanic of faith is surrogate faith. Surrogate faith. Everybody shout surrogate faith. faith. It's where someone else carries what you need. Surrogate faith. They have surrogate children, women who can't have children. Someone else will carry the baby. Nine months later, hand it over to you. They became a surrogate. It's the same thing when it comes to faith. You, some of us have surrogate faith where we can believe God for our fellow brother and sister. Hallelujah. It's proven in Scripture over in Mark 2 and 4. Look at it real quickly. It says, when they were unable to get him because of the, in the room because of the crowd, they removed the roof from above him. And after digging and opening, they let down the pallet on which the paralyzed man was lying. And Jesus, seeing not his faith, but their faith, their surrogate faith. And Jesus says, because of their faith, you are healed. I'm trying to tell you that your faith is so contagious that you got enough faith for your neighbor too. Glory to God. Is there anybody in this room that is a surrogate faith carrier? Just, just shout, I'm a surrogate faith carrier. You hang around me long enough. I believe God for my stuff and your stuff too. But you got to get connected. Glory to God. Well, you got folks who will grab you by the arm and say, God said we got to go. Surrogate faith. Everybody shout surrogate faith. First one is what? Submission faith. Third one is, se- second one is surrogate faith. Third one is special faith. Everybody shout special faith. Special faith is a unique ability. I believe I carry all four actually. I believe I have submission faith, surrogate faith, and then I also have the, the gift of faith. That's what special faith is. Hebrews chapter 11, verse Seven, we actually see special faith at work in the first book of the Bible, Genesis, with a young man by the name of Noah. Noah, when you think about the instructions Noah was given, he had to be crazy. See, when you're building, just because their life ain't prospering, they call you crazy. This crazy joker is building a boat. Have you seen him get in by Noah Street? Child, you got to go over there. He is he done lost his mind. Ain't been by the barber or nothing. He say, God said, build a boat. Now you and I both know, child, ain't no water coming through here. It ain't rained in 40 years. But he said, God said, build a boat. And here's what your haters will do. Well, check your progress. He checking in the television. Girl, have you heard? Girl, he got the doors on the boat now. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Now he's rallying up the animals. Have you seen? Have you seen the chickens though? Girl, them chickens ain't a bit of healthy. <laughs> That's what people will do. And God will let them let them watch you long enough to the point almost you appear embarrassing. 
And then boom, the rain comes. And while they drowning, you float. No, continue to make. While they drown and laughing, they underwater. You above it. You, you catch what I'm saying? It's because that is a faith that is special. It was so powerful that it's recorded in Scripture, Hebrews 11, right here, by faith Noah, being warned of God concerning the events as yet unseen. Special faith sees stuff before it even happens. I remember it was at the uh, uh, October of 2019 in this church. We had just did a debt-free campaign, Tamika, and we, we, we said, God said, cancel all the debt. And we went through, am I right about it, Kim? We went through, we raised a certain amount of money, and we canceled all the debt for loans and things of that nature. A month later, God told me to upgrade all the camera equipment, get all new lighting and, and, and create visuals for online ministry. I said, but you just told me. Cancel the debt. That don't even make sense. Now you people getting ready to laugh at me. That, that, that none of that matters. Just go, Ellie, upgrade all the camera equipment, upgrade all the lighting, improve the visualization. You'll understand it later. So come November, December, this church went through a major visual upgrade. Y'all remember that? And, and I, be, I, I thought I was tripping. Something just going on. What, what is going on? But, but God said, just, just upgrade the equipment. I heard nothing about no coronavirus, COVID-19, pandemic. Didn't know anything about it. Come February, yeah. we started hearing the news about a pandemic, and we laughed at it. Right? We get to the first Sunday in March. Boom, shut the church down. He says, you see why? I told you to upgrade the camera equipment. It is because I was preparing you for what they didn't see. Special faith is when God says things that have yet to happen, but you trust what he said and you move off of the said instructions. And watch this. You minimize impact. Special faith will help minimize your impact. Oh, y'all don't believe me? Ask the young man, what was it, Joseph? During the time of family, to, famine told the man, listen, we're going we gonna, to we gonna store the stuff because watch this, a famine prophetically, God has spoken to Joseph, said a famine is coming. Instead of you eating and ingesting, save it. Save it. And what happened was during the famine, the folk who was eating everything instead of storing ended up having to buy it from Joseph in a famine. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Special faith will help minimize the impact of tragedy. It is not to suggest that you won't be a part of the tragedy or the impact, but the impact is lessened because you abide it in special instructions that came from God. So God will tell you to save and not spend. You don't understand why. Pay off all your debt. You don't understand why. It's because he is preparing you for something you have not seen. That's special faith. Special faith. We got, uh, what's the first one? Submission. Uh, surrogate. Special. Um, and then the fourth one is systematic. I, I got to close my Bible with this one. Systematic. Everybody shout systematic faith. Um, it says um, Mark 11, verse 20, verse 24. Says, as they passed by the morning, they saw the fig tree withered away at its roots. Peter remembered and said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree that you cursed earlier has withered. This proves sometimes that when, when we're moving in realms of faith, sometimes when we're moving in realms of faith, it doesn't happen instantaneously. It happens over time. There's an error that exists currently in the body of Christ where this, 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 there's this theology or this doctrine that says it's going to be overnight. I, I, didn't, I didn't move in my dream house overnight. I remember in my 20s, I was walking in a house believing God for it. it took, I didn't get to my 30s until I got to my dream house. That's 10 years of believing God. But you said it's going to be overnight. Well, I mean, when I look in, in Scripture, I, I don't see anything that corroborates that God moved just overnight with matters of faith. I mean, when you think about Abram and Sarah, yes, sir. that took quite a while. 
for her to give birth to that child. When you think about Caleb, that, that, that took a while. Look at y'all looking at me, look at you. <laughs> it's because we have been taught something about faith that's not correct. Right. And that is we have an improper understanding of timing. And we trash our faith when it doesn't happen at the timing that the prophet said it. And truth be told, many of them are saying that because they know that's what excites you. The prophet's going to tell you, hey, man, what God's going to do for you, man, it's going to happen in 2045. Now, would you run around the church over that? No. So what they'll do is they'll short circuit the instruction. You know, God says he's going to do it overnight. Now you run around the church and you get to 2045 and it happens. So we have to mature when it comes to matters of faith because biblical faith is not, not anything that happens overnight. I'm telling the truth. There's nothing in scripture that corroborates this, that when you speak in matters of faith that it happens on tomorrow. One day with God is a thousand years and one thousand years is one day. So when you level set, this is the problem. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for giving me this. When you level set your expectation when it comes to matters of faith, you'll then begin to trust the process. If God gave you everything you wanted today, you'd mismanage it. So what he'll do, Lord, he'll let, he'll let us grow into it. If God prospered our church at day one, we would mismanage it. 